there seems to be, you know, man-made law that we uh, are captured under, but then there seems to be some kind of spiritual law above that, where, you know, you're talking about the royals, the people in the highest level of control are subject to this, um, this type of law that goes above man-made law. Hey guys, we're excited to bring this guest to you today. Unfortunately, Shane cannot be with us today, but we still have a great episode for you here. And this man is the author of a book. And towards the end, we were experiencing some connection issues, some technical difficulties. I don't know what exactly happened, but we kind of got cut off in our conversation. But you guys are going to love this this discussion and let's just get started. We've been utterly lied to about our history and our origins through scientism and um, our timeline is completely messed up. We have no idea who we are or when we are. And we don't, we barely even understand where we are considering all the deceptions around you know, the heliocentric model and the rest. Well, the real danger is the fact that we are heading toward a post-human apocalypse. There may be a connection between modern day abductions and the ancient tale of the Nephilim. If we don't understand the Genesis 315 narrative, the Messiah will crush your head, you will bruise his heel. That is the gateway to the entire rest of the biblical prophetic narrative. Pergamum. They're in the city where Satan's throne is. The Satan is the Prince of Rome. The Prince of Rome is Jupiter. The Prince of Rome is Zeus. Because Satan is Zeus. The end game, which is Armageddon, is going to be the emergence of a new golden age in which the gods walk openly among mankind as they did in the world before the flood of Noah. And there's no stopping it. It will happen. Welcome, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to another episode of Question the Narrative. I got a very special guest with me today. His name's Daniel Collier. He runs the YouTube channel Sons of Light. And I would like for you guys to just uh, hear what he has to say. He's got a lot of great information along the same as we've been discussing. So why don't you go ahead and uh, just tell our guests about who you are and, and just like a brief testimony of how you how you came to where you are today. All right. So, uh, you know, this there's many facets to um, what my narrative is. The Sons of Light channel is just one of them that happened to be centered around uh, a book I ended up writing. <clears throat> it was shortly after 9-11. Uh, I was an average guy, you know, I was a Christian at the time. I'm still a Christian, but I was a Christian at the time. I was going to, uh, I was going to seminary school to be a pastor. And, um, you know, then after 9-11, being the average guy I am, uh, but 9-11 occurred and then suddenly something triggered in me, kind of waking me up out of normie mode. So I was yeah. like everyone else, like the average person, believed the typical things that Christians are taught to believe about the Bible. And, uh, you know, I guess you could say I was still in the matrix at that time. But 9-11 occurred. You know, it's been a long time. It doesn't seem like a long time to me, but it's been a long time. And uh, when that happened, something triggered in me to be like, OK, this is, you know, the world is getting crazy and something about this story doesn't seem right. You know, something spiritually about the news, the information coming through was just striking me. So, you know, I had during that time it was a big time for a lot of spiritual uh pastors and people on TV always talking about the end times and the book of revelation and, and all these sorts of things. So that always, that was a big deal back then. And, uh, so I wanted to really know the truth. There was just something about everything that was going on in America. There was stuff starting not to seem to match up to the narrative. So I, I sincerely, uh, I sincerely prayed to God about it. And I said, look, reveal to me, I want to know the answers of how everything works. What's going on? What is this 
what's really happening, this dark side thing. And, uh, you know, I tell people that praying that prayer and getting these answers, because this information, I didn't just come up with it in my head. It was revealed to me over time. And, um, you know, it's like in the Bible where it says, ask and you shall receive, knock and the door shall be open. Well, I asked the question and the door was open, but the information I have learned and since that time regarding this dark side, this revealing what what's called the um, the externalization of the hierarchy, what they have put out there, they put it out under like a magic spell. They reveal it to everyone, but because everyone doesn't know the magic of what they're doing, they accept it. And uh, but when I prayed this prayer, I suddenly was awaken from that and began to see the magic spell. A lot of people are awake now after the last uh, medical event that took place, the pandemic. Right. Um, but for 20 years, I've been trying to wake people up and they were still wanted to stay asleep in the matrix, regardless of how much, it didn't matter how much proof I gave them, they wanted to stay asleep. And the creation of this book I wrote uh, was a compilation of information in a way in which reading it, you no longer could deny that this was going on or it existed. It would, it would, you'd have to, uh, you'd have to go beyond your common sense and just live in complete denial that the this stuff was going on, and it wasn't just a group of people doing it for money. There's a spiritual side of this because the people involved in it have all the money they need. They're exactly. doing it for another dark agenda. And that agenda to me, from what I find, is they hate, they literally hate men. They hate us. They hate us. Or they yeah. feel they feel they are like a superior race or something. Like like they're mm -hmm. they're it seems like their belief system is that they're a hybrid or a pure race going back to Adam or something. And everyone else is this mixed race or impure race of people. And it's, they can do as they wish to you, like your cattle. Uh, so I don't know if you want to add to that, anything you found out or anything, but. Uh... Yeah. So what you just said, it reminds me of in Matthew 24, how the Lord said that if, uh, if those days weren't shortened, that there shall no flesh be saved. And it's almost like, just like that, that's almost the agenda is just like every human being would just be exterminated. And the way I kind of picture it is like, the Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. And so he thinks that this place is his but we're here at the same time and he doesn't like the fact that we're here and it's like if you had a bunch of uh, cockroaches in your kitchen well you're not just going to leave them in your kitchen what are you going to do to every single one of those cockroaches you're going to get rid of them cuz that's your kitchen that's your kitchen that's not their kitchen and that's kind of i don't know just like a corny analogy that that i that i think of you know, just kind of what you're saying. It's just, they, they don't like us here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's a, you know, none of us have access to it that I know of, but there seems to be from what I've found out over time. Now there seems to be, you know, man-made law that we uh, are captured under, but then there seems to be some kind of spiritual law above that where, you know, you're talking about the, royals, the people in the highest level of control are subject to this um, this type of law that goes above man-made law. And there yeah. are certain things within that, like, you know, if there's remnant of fallen angels, if there's men who are dedicated to the dark side and they're attempting to do things to us, even though they hate us or they look at us as cattle or cockroaches, they have to do things, uh, they have to reveal what they're planning to do and to give us a choice as to whether we'll follow mm -hmm. it or, or, you know what I'm saying? But the, the thing is, is they do it through magic. They do it through hiding things. And if we accept it, 
um, then that's then then that gives them reign to rule over us or do bad things to us. And the thing is, is they've keep they've kept their methodology of uh, subverting everyone a secret. People don't know the formula that they use to deceive us. And uh, because people get so, they keep getting so far away from a spiritual understanding of everything. These people use music and they use uh, Hollywood, they use movies and they, they reveal what they're going to do. And then everyone, uh, when they start to see it happen, uh, they've already accepted it in some way. They're not outraged by it anymore or something. And that gives them the spiritual legal authority then to carry it out, to, to do the deception or whatever happens to the masses, you know. I mean, it's a deep subject when you get into it, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like what, what you're saying through the movies, entertainment, and it's subliminal messages that that they put out there and it's a warning of sub, such like you said and once they given that warning out it's like the game is square now we we told you and if you guys accept it that's that's on you now it's not on us we we warned you about it it's kind of like that it's imagine if there was you know after the great war when the angels fell and some were cast out and some were imprisoned or whatever that uh, there was some kind of legal counsel that took place, mm -hmm. and there were certain laws about their inter what they were allowed to do and not to do uh, to humans. And you know, God had laid some boundaries there, you know, as to what you know how He could fool people and whatever. And there, there's I don't have access. I wish I had access to this. I may discover it at some point in time what those laws are, but. Uh, I know that they have to externalize or reveal it to us because that's what happens. They reveal it in advance and then later it takes place. And if nobody says anything, no one reacts to it. If they go about complicit to whatever's going on, then they're allowed to carry it out. So, um, and yes, they, so that's another thing I, I was, uh, so I have a degree in marketing and a minor in science, but, uh, when I was in college, I had a professor who used to be in the CIA, and he did clandestine stuff with uh, covert things and subliminal things and mind control stuff. And I just, I don't know why I was drawn to it. I was very interested in it, and I got to be kind of friends with him. And he gave me, at that time, just strange books, you know, about psychological things, subliminal advertising. I was just blown away by the amount of stuff, uh, how much thought process goes into an advertisement that you watch. Even the simplest things on TV seem so silly and stupid, can have multifaceted layers of psychological programming in it to get you to vote for somebody, to get you to um, you know, want to drive a car for certain reasons. I mean, there's so many embedded things in just a simple advertisement to control, to mind control you. Yeah. Um, it's unbelievable from the colors they use it. And it's people think it's going to school and you learn how to advertise. You're learning witchcraft. You're, you're learning certain ancient forms of uh, spell casting and manipulation and stuff like that. So uh, I, I have that in my book, I have things uh, that show how many movies had implanted 9-11 um, in it before uh, the Twin Towers and all that stuff took place. There were so many movies that had, um, every time somebody looked at their watch, it would be 9-11. Every time a bomb was getting ready to go off, it would flash the screen, it would be 9-11. I mean, just, so I, I give pictures of them. If you don't look at the pictures, you, and hear somebody say it, you're like, yeah, yeah. But when you look at pictures, you're like, oh, I saw that movie. Holy crap, that's a bunch of, like, <laughs> that really is implanted in there, you know? Like, so um, I give a lot of pictures of that in the book so people can look at it and really realize that they're watch they're not just watching a movie. The movie is not 
the intent of the creators, whoever in Hollywood produced or whatever, the intent of the movie is to implant this message. That entire movie was for one thing, and that is to implant a future message. Uh, in fact, I'll get, so I'll give you one more crazy thing around 9-11, because the whole beginning of my book goes through and shows you that the whole event of 9-11 was a gigantic witchcraft spell using numerology and gematria and stuff. So, uh, and I ran across this the other day. I'd never seen this video. Um, but so uh, early on in the 60s, uh, when they were getting ready to try to get uh, it produced, get the towers built and stuff like that, you see Rockefeller on, <clears throat> I don't know if it was his own publication, but you see Rockefeller's on the front page of this thing. And you see the, like the blueprints of the towers, you know, and it's before they get built and they were planning all this. But the oddity of the thing was, is they made sure that his watch was, you could see his watch and his watch, the hands were on nine and 11. And you're, you're like, okay, come on. And then on the yeah. back of the, in the back of this publication is another thing with him on it. And in the background, I believe the, the clock's hands are on nine and I think 11 past nine or something like, so it's, there's no way that 20 years before they built it or whatever occurred in the sixties that the hands of his, you know, it's going to be on nine 11 on the clock and then on his watch. So it was planned, you know, before they ever tore the towers down or the whole event took place, nine 11 was already pre, I think he even owned AT and T at the time. And it was mm -hmm. him uh, AT and T got the emergency number. They wanted to use nine nine nine, which of course is six 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 upside down. But uh, so they they're the ones that instituted nine eleven as the emergency uh, number through AT and T. I think Rockefeller. So it's very these people. I can't I can't explain because I'm not in the occult. Yeah, but they plan stuff very long in advance. Uh, for some, I believe the towers were built to be torn down for, you know, the for the whole event to exactly. restructure society. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it changed everything about our whole life from Patriot Act, how we travel, you know, all of the screenings, removing our freedoms, you know, whatever. So, yeah. So anyway, if you want to talk about another yeah. subject, we move on to that. You know? No, I was I was gonna say too, like you were talking about how how deep and articulated they go into about the mind control aspect and it's it's so deep and i don't think people understand with the messages on tv and everything like that to where you know how you were saying about even just purchasing a certain car and they they manipulate your mind in a way to where you're actually thinking that you're making the decision on your own free will but it's it's almost like they're they're doing it for like they they led you to that that decision and and you think that you're making it on your own but they're the ones that led you to it you know what i'm saying yeah it's so you know that the guy that owns uh you know an hvac repair company in your hometown is not planning out commercials like that look when it comes to huge uh, huge corporations, you know, like, you know, mega corporations, they're hiring teams of people. And within that, the planning of these commercials and stuff obviously has occult significance. So there's people mm -hmm. on that team planning this out, just like the movies, <clears throat> um, who have possibly even like high level witches who, who are very well versed in being able to uh, create a multi-level layered psychological manipulation and yeah. make you think you're just watching a commercial about buying a soda or eating yeah. at a fast food restaurant when when in reality they're implanting a message to you um, that's causing you to vote for somebody or agree to a certain uh, agenda that's taking place um, right. So, yeah. And to the average person, let, let me tell you, I understand to the average person, 
that sounds like a couple of crazy people talking and there's no way <laughs> that somebody's doing all of that. But yeah. I promise you, uh, if you, if you know the things that we know, it is exactly what they're doing. You are not just watching a commercial to sell a yeah. product. They are selling you They're They're doing something to get you to uh, fall along with their agenda. Right. And one more thing along those lines, I think a lot of people have been manipulated into thinking that movies are make believe and the news is real. So it's like, actually, in my opinion, it's actually flipped around. You know what I'm saying? The news is fake. But what they're showing you a lot of times in the movies, it could literally be a documentary of how things really go on. But people, like you said, they put their guard down. And there's like, oh, no, that could never happen. But they're literally like showing you exactly how they do things. But people just watch it and think it's fiction. They do. So, you know, this book is just a facet of things. And I wrote it specifically so people could once they once they read this book, they they'll understand that it is true that there is there is a spiritual side and and the unless these people 20 40 years ago had a supercomputer to to predict the future and carry out all of this they have to be connected with <clears throat> something some higher entity who understands how humans work how future events right. can be manipulated through numbers and times and and uh, things dealing with the stars and all of this kind of stuff. It's so in depth to us because we don't, we're not born into this going to special schools to learn all of this. And it does seem, especially when you get into how they use numbers and gematria, that e even events like 9 11, there's so much intricacy to the connection of everything. Uh, you sit back and you say, you know what, not even a team of people, you know, military advisors or whatever could sit and plan all of this and make it coordinate. It's, it's almost as if <clears throat> there's higher entities involved in uh, bringing all this together. And like I say, unless, <laughs> unless you've been studying this like I have for 20 years, um, it right. will seem like a little bit of craziness. And I understand that. So don't think I don't get it, but uh, it gets very deep. <laughs> yeah, for me, I don't think you're crazy. And if anyone's been listening to this podcast for any length of time, I don't I don't think they think you're crazy either. Uh, but yeah, that's that's very, very interesting and and so true. And I would was wondering, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of summarize in your book? Like what's what's uh, another thing that, that you're talking about in this book and, and go into a little more detail? So, yeah, so the book is, it's called Reason to Believe, and it's got two facets to it. The second half of the book goes into proving through deductive reasoning that there is a God and that, um, you know, that Jesus existed, that you can trust, you know, the timeline and the historical uh, information of Christianity. And that what I did was I took all of the major points that uh, the average either atheist or skeptic, you know, you've heard all the things when they whip out something right. to you and they say, oh, well, you know, God is just a creation of your own mind or, you know, or they say, you know, you know, wh how can you believe in some sky daddy up there or some old man? would have Yeah, that's one, their you know? favorite one. Yeah. You know, and so I, what I tried to do is take all of those points and give, mm -hmm. I searched as many in-depth in things as I could find to counteract those, not in a mean way, but in a way where somebody reads it and they're like, oh, wow, you know what? Uh, I can really believe that there is a God because I, I do things like use statistical probability, which uh, when I debate people or things like atheists and people who are skeptics, they hate that absolutely because it's science. 
And it brings to light that their arguments are pretty ridiculous statistically when you have probability of, okay, so what is the probability of evolution? And there was a guy named Sir Frederick Hoyle, who I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he was like the greatest astronomer. And uh, they did calculations as to what is the probability of everything coming about by random chance. And, uh, you know, from in an evolutionary, evolutionary standpoint, and it was one chance and a number followed by 40,000 zeros. So all of this stuff coordinated together, uh, actually coming about an evolution and all of that went way, I mean, unbelievably past the null probability of scientific understanding. Right. So believing in that uh, is insanity in itself. <laughs> You know, I, I did yeah. go into some stuff, too, about, you know, who uh, Charles Darwin was and his father and their, you know, they were high ranking Masons and the whole, you know, plot behind that to introduce uh, a, a counter narrative to uh, Christianity. And that's what you find with this is another narrative. Most religions you find that were started from Jehovah's Witnesses to <clears throat> you know, uh, Mormonism and stuff, you always find Scientology, you will find someone who's uh, either a high ranking Luciferian, uh, and you'll find they're a Mason, because yeah. their job within that to reach their highest levels, they have to create a religion that is a counter narrative to Christianity. So that's where you find all right. of these sub religions and things like that they were and why they were started by these people because that's part of and you'll find most of them have to become a catholic priest which is blows people's right. mind this guy will be a professed luciferian or a satanist and then he'll also be a catholic priest which you know should answer a few questions for some people <laughs> Yeah, that that would seem like a contradiction to most cuz they think oh that's the most holy thing and and come to find out yeah like they literally worship the devil you know what i mean and i had heard too which i don't know if you can confirm this or not but that if a freemason ever got in any sort of trouble or whatever he can go to like a mormon church and take refuge there and they'll basically receive him yeah i've heard of that too. yeah yeah i've heard of that too there was a lot of stuff even around the assassination of um abraham lincoln mm -hmm. and uh was it john wilkes booth and he was you know trying to flee and get there was a stories written about how he tried to flee the country and the people involved and how they i i think some of them fled and they hid in a mormon farm and then one of them got away and ended up in uh in rome or something like that before he was captured and so yeah there's a lot of stuff going down those rabbit holes as well um, I, I get into a little bit into the book now because my channel on YouTube deals a lot with, um, the millennial kingdom of Christ. Yeah. And, you know, I understand a lot of people, you know, most people who are Christian have been led down this, uh, rapture path in the coming of Christ, you know, in the future or sometime soon. And, uh, it's becoming pretty evident and I lay out some good information. You do that all of that already took place, that um, that Jesus kept his word, that when he was looking at the people he was talking to, and he said, some of you will not die before you see the, my return. Right. And uh, so either he was lying or, um, you know, you have to do some pretty good mental and theological jump rope to try to get into a position to say, no, he met 2000 years ago and it's all about me. Right. When I opened the Bible, that's when that's when the book of Revelation started when I opened yeah. it. All the Christians before me, they weren't as important. It's going to happen. Exactly. Now. And uh I can tell you when I started to discover this some time ago, uh some of my favorite pastors and people I had followed for a long time when I was still in normie mode. <laughs> um I started to discover now, I'm like, oh, hang on. These pastors are pushing this information pretty hard. And they're very well versed in the Bible. 
and they're pushing this, and they're also pushing this very heavy connection to supporting Israel. Yeah. And that is that is a and that's probably the most taboo subject. Um, it's why it's why I can't get monetized on YouTube and without any explanation or reason, I don't use any curse right. words or anything different, but I have mentioned a Middle Eastern country that has ties to everything, which I, I believe that this small Middle Eastern country <laughs> is running America right yeah. now and is behind Hollywood. It is behind the, the commercials and the black magic and the manipulation and the ideology, because I've heard it from their own mouth. I've heard them say it multiple times, not one radical person, but the high level um, religious leaders say that they're uh, children of God and everyone else is just a creation, which is the same thing. The dog is a creation, a, you know, cattle, a cockroach is yeah. a creation, which means you can use it as sacrifice. You yeah. can do what you wish with it. And the ideology too that if a creation happens to have your money well it's yours yeah. and you deserve it back yeah they they say goyim don't they or something like that we're goyim yes which is you know um yeah it's another word for cattle and yeah or for exactly lesser human right uh, so anyway I, if you get deep into that subject you really can run into some problems later so but i think a lot a, a lot of people are catching on to this um and i i talk about a lot of that in the factor of common sense and what the because i had been in seminary school because i had been around uh and i was in one of those churches who was super high profile yeah um and got out of it because of some stuff I was seeing. I was like, hey, there's something's wrong here. And I went yeah. and later, yes, they had all kinds of controversies and, um, and I'm glad I got out. So my name wasn't attached to it, but, uh, yeah, yeah. all of, anyway, I forgot where I was going with that because there's so many fat, so many layers <laughs> of subjects evolved around it. Right. Um, and rap holes I could go down with stuff, but the, the church has been purposely led, uh, through this manipulation of things to teach people that um, there's a rapture coming, that the antichrist is coming and all of these things. And my theory on that is it's already, it's already happened. Nero was the antichrist, uh, the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, everything took place. And John wrote about it because he was in captivity by Rome. He, he wrote about it in, uh, he had to write about it in a way in which he couldn't come out and say Nero's the Antichrist. Yeah. Was, they would kill him, you know, but uh, all the evidence is there for that. And then some point in time, they have taken us, which I can't put my finger on and nobody can because they hid the books. But it appears that Jesus kept his word and that the Middle Ages were actually the dark ages were actually the enlightened ages, the age of unexplainable things like castles right. and uh, huge, like there's these 700 room castles built on the side of a mountain with marble floors and extravagant rooms. And they tried to tell us they had bronze chisels and ox carts and all of this things that you accepted without thinking about it. But then when somebody brings it to your attention, like now you start to think, well, Hey, that's impossible. We can't yeah. even build these structures now. Nonetheless, get it up on the side of a mountain. How did they produce the, what is the logistics for this? You know, like if you go and look at, um, like in Georgia, uh, in Russia, uh, when you start to look at the buildings, that are there, the fantastical, they're marvels of construction. Yeah. And I, I was, you know, I used to flip houses and I did a lot of construction going back two generations. My grandfather was a developer. I know the logistics of what it takes to build things and move things. It, it is mind boggling to think 
how many men it would take, even trying to say, like in all things, they throw at us slaves, which yeah. is a joke now, because yeah. you've got to feed these people. And who's, where's the bathrooms for them? How are you getting water to them? Just the, how are they getting, you know, whatever's going on to build a castle, you know, and it would take several lifetimes to get it done. It's just ridiculous. It had to be some kind of, it had to be some kind of miraculous event, whether it's yeah. giants. Um, and, you know, I, I, it came to me the other day, Jesus was talking and he told them in my father's house, there are many mansions. Yeah. And yeah. people have not thought about that concept that when he came back, all of a sudden appears all over the world in every country, these fantastical castles and mansions. How they got there and how they build them, I cannot explain because, you know, we weren't there and we don't have the historical information. But those mansions came from somewhere, right? And Jesus talked about them. Right. And just like what you're saying, when they say slaves built them or they use the chisels and all this stuff, it really is. And I said this in a previous video, it really is an insult to our intelligence when they, it is when an they, insult. when yeah. they say that, you know what I mean? It just, it's really insulting to think that, well, I mean, some people are like how you said in the normie mode and they don't even take a second to consider. They just think, well, it's there. So it must've been done somehow, but I was speculating just how, how you, you are, is that either angels or glorified people, or even the fact that maybe Jesus just spoke it into existence, just like he did the world, you know what I mean? And it, it doesn't make sense any other way when you actually examine this architecture. It's, it's absolutely mind blowing and absolutely amazing, but also an insult to say that horse and buggy people built it when, they, when they, when the time period that they say they were built in. Yeah. I mean, even even temples in uh, India and things where this entire elaborate structure is carved out of one stone, you know, like, like this whole temple is carved out of one stone. And then there's certain uh, places in it you can tap with, you know, a piece of metal or and it'll resonate a frequency or the old cathedrals where they would have bells in them. Or uh, the whole entire town looks like a circuit board, you know, yeah. when you look at it. Yeah. So these ancient structures, I've seen, I've seen uh, pictures of cathedrals, the floors, right, laid out in marble and whatever stones. And then side by side to that, a modern circuit board that's used for running a radio or something like that. Identical. It's identical. There's no statistical probability or statistical chance that someone created the floor of that cathedral and it magically is the exact same thing that works a circuit board in our modern times without that being a circuit board and a conductor from either the ringing of bells or the use of an organ, whatever it was, the technology was different, but it was highly advanced, which leads us to the fact that someone's covering up what really happened some years ago and they're keeping us why they use all this mind control on us why they inundate us with movies and entertainment and music um to keep everyone asleep especially public schools <laughs> right yeah which which is why we homeschool our children thank god for that um i was gonna say though um just with the whole middle ages, whatever they call it, middle ages and then dark ages. But you had brought up that it might actually be the light ages, which that time period is a thousand years or so. And I just found out this information literally yesterday about an empire around that same time was called the Byzantine empire. And strangely enough, that was a thousand years as well, this empire that reigned. And it's just like, well, what if, you know, what if I'm just, I got a lot of what ifs in my head, you know, because we know that 
they just been lying to us about everything. And then you also got this mathematician named Anatoly Fomenko, who says that, yeah, so I mean, he even says our history and our timeline is all messed up. And he's basically saying that there's like a thousand years of missing period and all these events that we seem that they seem to feed us. It's all the same event. They just put different days and like different locations different names, on yeah. it, but it's like the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I remember watching a documentary about this guy and that, yeah, that's exactly what he said is that, uh, they, it's the same event. They just put different names and, uh, timelines on it to which yeah. now we can hardly trust, uh, any timeline. We don't, we don't even know how long it was between when perhaps Jesus and the saints left and our modern history. It may not even be that long. You know, it could be uh, much closer. Yeah, I've literally uh, contemplated or theorized that we may very well be 200 years or less post millennial reign of Christ. And people think that it's insane. And they're like, no, we, well, we would have known. But most people living today, I mean, what, 70, 80 years old, maybe the oldest. And you don't you don't know that far back and it, it could only take maybe a couple generations to completely change the mindset and indoctrinate someone so it's very well possible and and it's actually very prideful and arrogant to think that oh well i know everything that happened 400 years ago <laughs> when 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 we know just like what yeah when we know just like what you were saying earlier how we're manipulated on every front Every front, yeah. You, you look, take for example, uh, the average person gets up. They are so placed in a matrix. They, mm -hmm. how, how many times do they go outside at night and even look at the stars anymore? Very rarely. Mm -hmm. They'll get up, they'll drive to work, they'll never look at the sky. They, they don't even notice uh, chemtrails and the spraying of the sky. And if they do look at it, they think it's normal. Right. Yeah. When you are placed in such a stressful state, um, trauma based mind control continuously from the news and events and whatever, um, you you begin to retreat into yourself and you stop uh, focusing on the reality of things in your cognitive reasoning. You stop questioning. Um, it's a whole psychological tactic to it. And if you're dealing with fallen angels and things like that, they know how the human brain and the human psychology operates and uh, they're able to capture most people through this. And right. uh, so anyway, it's entertainment um, music. I go into this a lot uh, in the book talking about how um, even Socrates and Plato had writings about using music to manipulate the masses and the right type could help and the wrong type could destroy it's been all this stuff is like ancient knowledge being revamped. Yeah. Um, so my theory is, is that the things that appear like um, to match up with the book of revelations, like, so how, how Christians are led to believe that we're in the end times and you have pastors talking about Gog and Magog and tying these things together. Uh, what I think is happening is, that Satan has a methodology of doing things, a routine or a plan, you know. Uh, Jesus showed up uh, when Nero and the Roman Empire had taken over, and also the, the issues with the scribes and Pharisees were a big problem because they weren't doing what God had intended for them to do. They weren't going out into the world and getting people to believe in God, the one true God and all that. They became isolated within themselves. And so the world was falling back into Satan's control again. And I believe that's the exact time that Jesus showed up to stop all the things. And then the book of Revel, you know, all this stuff took place then. And all that's happening now is Satan is trying to recreate the same yes. exact methodology. You're looking at a mirror of the events the difference is he's getting Christians 
to believe in this so that they stand down, so that they think that yeah. if I interfere in what's happening now, I'm going to be going against Jesus. I'm going to be stopping what God has planned to take place for the future. So they stand down. It's brilliant. It was a, yeah, it a is. brilliant plot. <clears throat> and, I, and I'll tell you, I had written a book before even where I was in total agreement to all of this. I was completely normied into it, the Christian belief system. And when I woke up to it, I totally, then I can see uh, how I was duped into it. But right. I believe what we're looking at now is how Christians have been led to believe that all of this book of Revelation stuff, and it's all about to happen now. Um, yeah. And Christians, Christians are the hardest to convince of it because they think, oh, well, God would just reveal it to me. And, uh, you know, the if you read in the book of Revelation, it said even the elect, if possible, even the elect would be fooled. And that's that's the believers are the elect. And it's right. possible for so the God's telling us, Jesus told us that the elect can be fooled. So right. it's, you know, you got to guard your heart. So if that's my only mission is to help help believers not be fooled. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do is wake Christians up out of this mind control sleep. Their soul may be saved, but they're being, they're being constricted and guided and, and, and controlled from doing what uh, Jesus intention for us to do. That is to expose and fight evil as part of the plan, right. not just, we're to do good and all the things that Jesus said, but we're also called to expose evil. And that's something that <clears throat> doesn't seem to be on the agenda of most churches. You know? Right. Yeah. And it's, you know, this, this whole futurist message, it's all over the place. Right. And you and I both know that there's certain things that you can't talk about that you can't say. So if this message was actually, a threat to the enemy, it wouldn't be able to be spread out so widely. So it's it's like Satan and the enemy, they don't even necessarily have a problem with that message. And it's just that they they don't have to take that message away. That's fine with them. They just have to deceive you into what time what time you're actually living in. So you could preach that message all you want because that's those events are are far in our past, you know, so you could keep preaching that and it doesn't bother him any, any bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, you know, they, even on the money when they printed out, you know, it says E pluribus unum our, our, uh, Novus order seclorum. Yeah. Novus order seclorum yeah. about the new world order and our enterprise has succeeded. Right. But what they don't want is Christians to realize that their time, <clears throat> if they realize that Jesus returned, that the millennial kingdom already took place and that the, and where we stand right now and that everything falls apart for the control system, right. <clears throat> the whole NASA exactly. narrative, the whole uh, yep. spinning ball. I, I just did a video on where I found old footage of, from a NASA. funny thing happened. Yeah, funny thing happened on the way to the moon where yeah, I this saw whole that. blue marble <laughs> that we've been looking at, <clears throat> which they base everything. They even have a computer. Everything goes through this blue marble programming so that no matter what pictures are taken, it all comes out to look that shape and size. Right. <clears throat> you know, and uh, they're supposedly filming the blue marble from thousands and thousands of miles away. And then they remove the silhouette they had in the window and you see the light just fills the entire window, which yeah. the only explanation of that is the earth is way larger than we've yeah. been told. <clears throat> so yeah, exactly. What a, that's, that's a phenomenal concept in itself. You know, it is what's beyond what's beyond that edge. Right now you get into the Admiral Byrd, Antarctica stuff and all of that, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, if if everyone knew what what we're talking about, you know, it said you said it, it would destroy the spinning ball narrative. 
And also it would destroy atheism in my, in my opinion, if, if someone knew that Jesus, that there was a person named Jesus, he made a lot of claims and he actually fulfilled what he said he was going to do. And he actually came back and he established rule here on this earth for a thousand years that destroys atheism in my opinion as well. And if you were to still deny that, which some obviously would, then you're just uh, a fool. Think about the concept of, <clears throat> think about the concept that if people understood, because when you get into the Old Testament, like really, it's a, that book is crazy with the stuff it talks about giants, you know, and, uh, and hybrid right. and, the, and the Nephilim creating chimera and hybrid half human, half horses. And then you have it spilling over into like, you know, they taught us in school that it was Greek mythology, but to the Greeks, that was their right. religion. That was like, that was science. The, so they, they told us that they're the smartest mathematicians. They created a lot of things and they were so brilliant, but they were also so stupid in their belief of, you know, <laughs> so think about the mind control yeah. that goes on there. I think the Greeks witnessed things, <clears throat> the stuff they wrote about may not have been exact the stories and stuff, but they had to deal with real things like chimera and giants and, and Titans and all that yeah. stuff uh, really existed because the Bible in Genesis writes about that too. And it's the reason that God had to destroy because there wouldn't be any remnant of man left of, from Adam. And then the, his promise through Jesus couldn't take place. And that's where we get into the modern people, the, the modern push is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. The modern push for this thing dealing with um, transgenderism and all of that stuff. We get into that. And right. uh, I think that has to deal with moving us into the, the book of Genesis type of thing where they're really trying to create chimera to get man to merge with machine or other things to live forever this is all they're so whatever's going on, they're moving us back to that Genesis point in time now, you know, I, I, that may be, a, right. I may have just went off on a tangent, but. No, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, I was, I was thinking though, just kind of bringing us back to when we were talking about how the modern day church believes a certain way but there's certain things that worked us up to where we are today. Like we, you know, like the Schofield reference Bible, and then there's the, the birth of the state of Israel. And then now there's a push for a third temple and stuff like that. So they, they did something to where they, they're, they're, manufacturing events in my opinion to make it seem like we are in those end times so do you want to touch a little bit more on that like maybe something some stuff that you know about the creation of this state of israel the the schofield bible and stuff like that because that that's that's huge that really changed a lot of people's perception on things all right so uh imagine you've got uh, a, you know, you've got a group of people who were pretending to be religious going in Jesus time. Jesus comes and exposes them as being, you know, of your father, the devil and all of that stuff. They're not actually worshiping God. Perhaps they're worshiping. And when you get into Kabbalistic stuff, you find out there, they believe there's a God above the God of the creator God. There's, they believe in other gods and weird stuff in this uh, type of teaching. <clears throat> and Jesus said, you make the gospel, you make the Torah of no effect and the law of no effect. Right. So right. then there's the big destruction. Jesus comes back, scatters them. And these people, you know, uh, the language is lost. Uh, there is no Hebrew for a long time. And then suddenly somebody comes along, creates the Masoretic text. They recreate Hebrew. Who knows if it's the real, it's a lost language. Who knows if it was the real Right. original one. And, you know, if 
it be if that area had become the central hub of Satan's rule at the time, uh, I believe that it was the plot, just like it was. It's the plot now. the The Schofield Bible was the introduction to get to fool Christians to believe that the state of that that the modern Zionist ideology was God's will. When you read in all of the ancient scriptures and stuff in the Torah, God made covenants with these people who were a mixed multitude of people who left Egypt. They weren't just a race of people. You know, remember the Bible says that, right. you know, that circumcision is circumcision of the heart, not just of the flesh. So God cares about the spirit and the flesh. This mixed multitude left Israel. They linked, they stayed in a bunch of different places, eventually, in, I mean, they left uh, Egypt, ended up eventually in this place in uh, they called Judea, and um, then they ended up falling away from God, many of them, especially the scribes and Pharisees, who I believe were not genetic Jews. They were something else, you know, you get into a lot of theological stuff, but they were destroyed because of the things they were doing and scattered to all the nations. And I believe this right. same belief system, whatever, uh, the Ashkenazis and, and however all that came about there, uh, it is the creation of Israel as the central hub of control for um, Christians think it's for uh, God's chosen people. I think it's the opposite. I think it's for a central world control for, for against Christ. Um, because Israel right. to this day, they're really not the people that live there. A lot of them are just whoever average people, but the controlling yeah. factors, they have said with their own mouths that, you know, they believe that Christians, you know, kind of need to be eliminated. And that you have Christians yeah. who are all like, eh, you know, you know, whatever they do is the best. Let's pray for their success. If you pray for their success, yeah, right. and their religion says you need to be eliminated. You're a double minded person. You're a, you know, you've become Judas, you know, without the 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. Does that make sense? What I yeah. said or. Yeah, no, it may. It does make a lot of sense. And I've speculated which it sounds crazy to a lot. We've talked a little bit about this in previous episodes that even a lot of our geographical locations, I think that's how you say it, that they may not even actually be what we think they are. Like say we call this America or the United States today, but it may have been called something else in the past. You know what I mean? Same with the that little land in the Middle East that to me that that's not the real israel that that god is talking about in the bible there's you know mount god talks about mount zion so much and and even that alone what they call mount zion over there it's just basically like this little tiny hill like it's not some magnificent it's like not some magnificent thing to behold like how it kind of says in the bible yeah no i think it, i think that falls under the same narrative of just uh I, I think they wanted to establish a central hub to rule the world and mm -hmm. <clears throat> bring all these people in there. Um, I think even, I think the Jewish people, just like the Christian church or the average people, they're being fooled by their leaders. Their magicians are right. tricking them because you have a lot of opposition too. that Jews are trying to fight them and they don't agree with them. Uh, yeah. But I think they're under a spell too. Yeah, and and even in in the Word of God, you talked about say when God would scatter His people when they were disobedient and stuff, and then when they would cry back out to Him, He would He would forgive them, bring them back. So, in if we want to use that same logic, if we know how God worked in the past, why would He bring a people that hate Him, who deny Him, back and and bless that place when there there's for the most part, they're, they're not even believers. If, if, you, no. if that makes sense. No, it's, you know, like Israel is one of the, it's like sin city in a lot of places yeah. there. Like, uh, you know, what, uh, it's like the homosexual capital of the world, almost of the world. 
<clears throat> it is, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, and, but Christians have been duped by these pastors, te- you know, preaching this message that, you know, if you go against Israel, then you're, you're uh, cursed, disobeying God, or you're going to be cursed. But all throughout the Old Testament, whenever God made a covenant, it's a two-sided covenant. It wasn't just him promising to do good things for them and blessing them. <clears throat> they had to keep yeah. their end of the covenant too. And that is to um, be kind to strangers, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, basically represent him as ambassadors. And they, they broke all these covenants multiple times throughout the Bible until the right. final straw when they rejected God on earth. They actually rejected God. So that was they the did. final straw, almost like the unforgivable sin. That So whatever came about and has been brought about now is, I don't, I don't believe it's, I don't believe it's because yeah. God brought them together for some great and good thing for the, you know, to fulfill the book of Revelations. I don't, I don't think that's happening. 